This video is about the function command in OpenSCAD and how to make uh, mathematical functions using that. And this is pretty much just going to be 2D uh, for this video. Uh, so the function command looks like this, just the word function and then some name. Uh, and you can get creative if you want. I just have f of x here, kind of standard math notation. Uh, and then whatever that function is going to be. So if you want sine x or um, x squared or uh, whatever it might be uh, just on this right side. Uh, x is going to be the variable that gets put in. And uh, that function just with the name f can be used later. So um, the way that you can use these to build uh, actual math functions in OpenSCAD is using for loops. So uh, if I go ahead and take this out, uh, what I have right now is a for loop that goes uh, i is 0 to 180 and it's going every two units and what I'm doing is just putting a whole bunch of circles. So I got circles of diameter 3, um, function number or face number 20 to kind of make them a little bit smoother and then just translating those over uh, by whatever this i value is. So uh, translate over i, uh, if it's 0, 0, if it's 2, translate 2, if it's 100, translate 100, uh, x direction. And this f of i, uh, which is my function height um, for the y. And so again, these are just 2D circles, uh, so there's no z component on that translate. If I go ahead and do that, um, you might look at it and say, well, that looks kind of weird because uh, you would expect the sign to go, you know, maybe up and down a bit more. But keep in mind, OpenSCAD uh, is degrees. So this is 0 to 180 degrees. And it's only moving up the sign function. Most it's going to go up is 1. Uh, so this is not going to go up very high in the y direction. Um, that means you'll probably want to modify the, this a bit. So maybe go up, say, 10. So I can do 10 times sine of x, and now it'll actually get a height I can see on there. Uh, or if you want to go up as high as 20, something like that. Uh, just depends on what you're looking for uh, for that guy. You may also want to say, well, instead of sine of x, maybe I'll do the sine of um, 20 times x. Uh, something like that and now it's going to do a whole bunch of you know pieces in the middle that's right there um, or maybe you don't want that many maybe you just want 10 times x um, so now it's got um, about 10 of these if you were to go all the way 0 to 360 about 10 cycles uh, another thing you can try is you know maybe you don't want to go all the way to 180 maybe you only want to go to say 90 and maybe you want to go every one unit instead of every two units um, so you can get shorter functions with dots closer together longer ones with dots further apart it just all depends on sort of your definition of this f of x and the values you're putting into that for loop so right now this is going to go um, the sign of 10 times x which we'd expect 10 cycles if we went all the way to the the 360 and then the i is just going to go 0 uh, to 90 um, so we're not getting all the 10 cycles just like two and a half of those um, on this guy all right the other thing you can do so you may see if you zoom in that it it does have kind of the outline of um, the sine function but uh, there are separate pieces that are definitely not joined together and so that may create a problem uh, for you depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, so one thing to do, you might think, well, let's just hold those together and put a hole around it. Uh, and this is not going to really work out too well if you put the hole where I'm putting it now. Uh, because what it's going to do is, is just shrink wrap this entire thing. So uh, now that entire thing is just uh, encased and you really can't tell where the function was at all on that guy. Uh, so instead of putting the hole on the outside of the for loop, what works better is to put it on the inside of the for loop. So uh, I can do a hole 
basically of two pieces at a time. Uh, the first piece, so we'll say this, translate i, f of i, and then the next one in line, which would be the same thing, translate, uh, but instead of using i, I want to use i plus 1. And give me the next one, and f of i plus 1. Uh, so there is my translate, and then I'm translating the same things, uh, circles, diameter 3, uh, with face number equals 20. Uh, and a lot of times you can you know, copy paste this if it's longer and just change all your i's to i plus 1 in those. Uh, so now what it'll do is it'll do a hole around each pair of these guys. And oh, I missed something up there. Uh, forgot to close my hole. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so now you can kind of tell, oh yeah, there's kind of this smooth uh, sine curve that I got going on. Uh, if I don't want as many pieces, like I said, you can do, say, every two units. Um, that'll make it more jagged. And now it's going uh, here to the next one. Then it's skipping to the second and third one, skipping to the third and fourth one um, on those. Uh, so here you would actually want to say I plus 2 on that if you wanted to join those together. Uh, and now it'll take 0, the second fourth, six, uh, and just join those together. So whatever this is right here, um, let's just call this, this is one thing that you can do, our step size, and I'll change this to, to a step size, is kind of create this variable step that you can define up here. We'll say two uh, is what we have now if I want to make that 4, and now you can just change it in one place instead of having to change it in a bunch of places. Uh, so there's 4, there's 6, uh, and you can tell that's going to get more and more jagged as you go. Uh, if I want to take it back down to say 1, then it gets uh, a lot more smooth. Uh, you can even do stuff like you know, 1 half, if you want to do a 0 0.5 that would work. Uh, you're not going to be able to tell a whole lot of difference with this particular function between 1 and 0.5. So kind of find the sweet spot of, you know, smoothness to um, not as many elements that you need in your function. Uh, and just kind of decide where that is for you. Uh, so that's just kind of a quick way of, of making functions. Again, these are 2D functions. If you were to actually try to render that, uh, it's just a 2D object. But you can now do linear extrude, rotate extrude, whatever type of extrusions you want to attempt with those guys. So um, so that's just the function command and using for loops to actually make uh, mathematical functions.